You want your tidbit? For being a sweet girl? There you go. There's your tidbit. For being a good girl. Yes, there he is. There's your tidbit for being a good girl. Okay. Well, this is Belle. And uh, so this is a brand new place for Belle. She's never been here before. But this is very much the kind of habitat that she will be uh, hunting rabbits in. Uh, this is a uh, nice open sagebrush area. And so this is going to be a really good place for her to... And uh, so our job today with Belle is just go for a walk. And we're just going to walk out through the brush so she can see, see the habitat, see what it looks like. Um, be close to her, talk to her, be gentle with her. Um, practice the hood so she takes that hood beautifully even out in the field. She's such a good girl. Give her little treats. Yeah, give Belle little treats because she's such a good girl. You want another treat? Do you want another little treat for my baby, huh? There you go. Such a good girl. Put that right there. Yeah, put that on your toes. Right there. You can hand it to me, but I'm not going to bend over for it. I'm not that hungry. No, you're not that hungry. Should we go walk around a little bit, sweetie, and look at the brush? Look at the sagebrush? You know, this is actually one of the most enjoyable parts of falconry, is that you, uh, you get out in this beautiful habitat here, and you get to walk around with a with a, a new friend. Um, it's early morning and the sun has, has just risen. It's a little bit cool, which is wonderful because uh, we've had a very hot summer. And so this is just, just pleasant. And, uh, you know, I, I tell falconers all the time um, that if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. And that's extremely important for people to understand that, um, you know, this is not our occupation this is this is our lifestyle or hobby and if we're not enjoying what we're doing uh, find another hobby by all means uh, these these guys can sense when you're when you're not happy they can sense when you're nervous they can sense when you're agitated and it just makes the whole process so much harder and so to be able to come out and you know watch the sunrise and feel the cool morning air and and look at this beautiful desert out here is is truly a joy and so you know when when people approach falconry they need to approach falconry with the concept it's not about the kill that's just a tiny piece of it it really is all about the relationship that you develop with a wild animal in fact the uh, uh, falconry has been with us for more than 4,000 years and it's been an intimate part of the human experience and the United Nations has declared falconry a world heritage activity so it's it's very very important that we handle these animals with with gentleness and patience and kindness huh sweetheart such a pretty girl such a pretty belle you would do the hood this time, huh? Okay, here's your hood. Here we go. Oh, such a good girl. And again, the purpose for the hood is stress protection. Um, their eyesight's extremely good, and a lot of movement can frighten them, like driving them in a car or a lot of human activity and those kinds of things. Uh, so we want to make sure that all the birds are properly trained to the hood so they take the hood comfortably and easily huh, take the hood comfortably and that way if somebody out here on the desert comes ripping through here on, a, on motorcycles or ATVs and, and there's noise and there's dust and there's dirt and it's a pretty terrifying experience for, for a, a bird of prey especially a, a new young hawk like this one 
uh, all we have to do to help protect them is put the hood over their eyes and now they can just kind of relax for a moment let the threat pass and then once the threat is passed and, and calm has returned then we can pull the hood back off how oh, sweetie so so that they have not been overly agitated by by things outside of our control you know I've had like I said motorcycles and ATVs uh, we've had helicopters come through here at very low altitudes uh, jet planes uh, doing low altitude ground hugging radar sneaks and so there's all sorts of things that can really really upset these guys and so the hood is something that's extremely important I know a lot of falconers don't like to hood their birds for the for the sheer fact that uh, they're the birds aren't comfortable with the hoods because they haven't handled them uh, and taught them appropriately to take the hood and and so we spend a lot of time an awful lot of time getting them used to putting the hood on and taking the hood off such a good girl such a good good sweet girl yes you are would you like another little little goodie just a little one a little treat for my lady so we start the whistle training now this is my whistle and um, one of the things we like to do when we when they get a chance to eat something is blow the whistle this becomes the dinner bell and so let's see what you can do here see it startled you huh there you go and very soon she'll start to hear that whistle sound and that'll mean there's food available and she'll get um, really excited to either come back to the glove, come back to the lure, uh, to go to her perch, to hop in her box. There's lots of lots of little behaviors that we do with these guys, and the the sound of the whistle triggers those behaviors. Such a sweet little thing. You really are. Basically like clicker training, but with a whistle. Yeah, it's, it's sim very similar to clicker training with uh, with other animals. But the uh, nice thing about the whistle is these birds can hear that whistle at, at a great distance. And so the whistle allows us to call the bird back when they're a half a mile or more away. And so it's a very, very important tool that we get them used to and working with. Aren't you being a sweetheart? Yes, you are. Well, let's walk this way a little bit more. And my photographer here is my beautiful wife, Susan, and she's doing a great job not tripping over sagebrush. Yeah, you love it out here. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Okay, come over here, Sue. I wanna show these people down here. You can tilt the thing down. This is, um, Jackrabbit scat. This is jackrabbit poop, and you can, if you can, kind of look carefully, you can see how the little bits of grass in here have kind of been bent over. This is this is where a jackrabbit slept here last night. And so when we're, when we're out hawking, we kind of watch for these little things because this tells us, you know, how the rabbits are doing and and uh, possibly where the rabbits are at. So we do have a lot of jackrabbits in this area here, and we all, we're always looking for little signs, little tips on how to find these rabbits because they're in this very, very tall sagebrush. And uh, and not every sagebrush has, has a rabbit, so you have to find the right ones. Oh, that's a little one I wanted to show you guys. A little tiny one. Oh, oh, it's okay. There's my, there's my bell. There's my sweet girl. Okay. This is a small one, so I don't know if you guys can actually see that very well or not. Can you see that in the screen very well, Sue? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is silica. This is basically, um, this is a, a little droplet that came out of a, a volcano off to the uh, east of us here. 
there's a lava flow and there's quite a few volcanoes. And when the volcano erupted, it spewed out droplets of glass. And so that's what that is, is a little droplet of glass. And these, they're very, very pretty. And so these little droplets are all over the desert here. They're not really of any value, but I just find them interesting to, to see them in the area. The geology here is just truly amazing here in, in the southern Utah. And so we find interesting little tidbits and facts about these things. Well, should we walk back to the car, sweetie? We're going to head back to the car. Yeah. You're being such a good girl. Now, the time that we put with her uh, is, again, these train sessions are short. We don't, we don't want her to get upset. We don't want her to get bored. We don't want her to, to uh, get overly stressed. Can I have that? Thank you, sweetie. Yeah, we don't want her to ha have... So, so we try to keep all of the sessions. And so we do uh, give her three or four little train sessions every day at this stage because we, we want to build a routine, get her comfortable. Such a pretty girl. Oh, I know. Are we about patient out? Are we? Are we about patient out, sweetie? Okay, let's do this then. Up, 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 up. Yep, we're getting to we're getting tired of being patient. There we go. Okay. There we go. There's my pretty girl. Since age 12 with a bird on his arm, Martin has captivated audiences sharing his knowledge and experience of his wildlife friends. He has been providing wildlife and environmental programs throughout the Western United States to schools, scouts, and community groups for over 50 years. Please visit our sites to learn more and contact us to book an event or outing. Well, uh, again, good morning. We're out here at the Parowan Gap, and it's now time to uh, work with our newest friend. This is uh, Belle the Harris Hawk, and uh, she's, she's my newest little kid. And we're going to just start her. Now, Belle has only been with me a week. And so we're still in the process of uh, bringing her weight down so that she's a little bit hungry, so that she'll uh, uh, come to uh, step on the glove for food. And so we're at the very, very earliest stages of training. And uh, so I've got a, a little bag full of tidbits here. This is A tidbit is just basically, it's a little tiny piece of, piece of food. And uh, this is not just meat. This is actually, um, we, you know, we, we cut up, have to cut up whole animals because they have to eat whole animals. And so they eat whole rats and whole mice and whole quail. And we order those in frozen by the thousands. And then in this part of the training, we, th this is actually some, um, uh, some quail breast meat that we've cut up into little tiny pieces uh, so that uh, I can feed her little bits of training food. And uh, this has actually been a really good test for her. Like I said, she's only been with us a week. And this is the first time that I have driven her with her hood on. And so she hasn't uh, worn a hood uh, up until this point. But she's got her hood on now. You know, she's been wearing the hood around the house. And we've been teaching her about how to wear the hood. But to actually transport her in the box with a hood on, this is her very, very first time. And so we're very, very happy with that. And she's been a great little girl. Now for you, those of you that have seen me working with the Prairie Falcon and, and how high strung and, uh, and difficult they are, this is the opposite extreme. This is a Harris Hawk. Um, they are very, very um, sociable birds. 
and she has been coming along wonderfully and you can see she's not she's not yelling and throwing tantrums and all of that kind of stuff you know she's just trying to figure out life and she's being a really really good little little friend uh, she came out of a breeding project in Louisiana and so this this is not a, a hawk from the wild this is one from a breeding project and she's doing very very well aren't you Belle you're doing such a good job you are would you like a, a goodie for being so good with your hood and everything hmm now the whistle is um, the dinner bell and so we condition them when they hear the whistle that means there's food and let's see if she'll eat very good very good girl well we're just gonna walk over and put her on a on a post we walk around this way and we've sort of walking in right into Susan now we'll, and you can go past me Sue if you want the Sun that way if you want the, the, the Sun not to be in the, in the camera and I'm just gonna put her on the fence post here and so like I said this is very very early stages of training and here's my sweet girl yeah there's a fence post for you now here's the trick I have to be smarter than she is because she's a very very smart animal and she will want me to hand feed her and I will want her to step on up on the glove and so we have to be uh, a little bit creative here to do that. So we'll get a little cadet. Hey, my girl. And see, I, I put the glove up close to her feet, but the end of the glove away, so it makes it so she almost has to step up. She says, I'm going to think about it. That's a pretty girl. <laughs> I know you are so smart. Such a smart girl. Yes, you are. Here you go. Get your foot up. That's my girl. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. You did it. What a good girl. You stepped up. You did. Can you just see the little wheels in her brain working, trying to trying to figure things out, and you know what's the best way to get that little that little tidbit of meat? How can I do that? I can see this where this would require a lot of patience. It requires patience, but it's also it's, it's really really uh, a joy to watch these these beautiful young animals start to learn. And they get, they're so smart, and they they frequently will outsmart their humans. Won't they? So cute. 
But I can see this is something that not everyone would have the patience to be a falconer. It takes a great deal of time and patience to enjoy the process. There's no rushing it. There is no rushing it, and the process is really, really, um, you know, you only get to do this process once, because once the bird, you know, figures out the, the game, then, then, then it's no longer, it's, it's no longer teaching anymore, and it's, it's just a, the, the opportunity to have a, uh, to, to be, to be the teacher is really fun. You know, and school teachers get to do that with their with their students. There you go, almost, almost, sweetie. There you go. There you go. What a good girl. Well, I'm amazed at the patience school teachers have too. Not everybody can do that. No, not everybody can. But the reason people are are, are school teachers um, is to is to have that experience of watching their young pupil, and, or in my case, my young hawk pupil, um, learn something new, and and the understanding that that they were instrumental in that. Hello. 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 How old is she? Uh, she is about uh, 21 weeks old. Oh, baby. She's big. Well, they're full grown at about nine weeks. Really? Yeah. Huh. So we're just starting her training. You're pretty. Huh? You really there are we pretty. go. She got it before the whistle. Her name is Belle, and she's basically our newest wildlife ambassador for our wildlife rescue center here in southern Utah. And uh, she's just barely starting her training. Nice. Such a sweet girl. I was just reading where there's quite a few of them here on this. Uh, yeah. Whatever you want. Well, to we ha we have lots of birds of prey here, yes, but uh, the the Harris hawk is not native. Do you uh, mind, so mind if I have you on camera or not? Oh, you can. So, so yeah, the Harris hawk is not a not a native species uh, to the area. What are you red tails or something? Or? We have a lot of red tails, and we have a lot of golden eagles, and a lot of uh, both prairie and peregrine falcons, and Swainson's hawks, and all sorts of stuff here. But uh, yeah, this um, this one came out of a captive breeding program in Louisiana. Excuse me, Louisiana. But um, there we go. There's my girl. But um, these are normally from uh, southern Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. Hmm. That's, where they, that's where they originate from. There's my girl. What a sweetheart. That's where we originate from, too. So Is that right? Why, yeah, that's why I say Texas, so that's why it looks familiar. Yeah, we this, have this red tails and, and those and uh, some sparrow hawks and stuff. Uh huh. Hmm. She's like, that tastes good. She's pretty. Yeah, she's doing great. She's such a good little kid. Well, good luck with her, guys. Thank you. She's like, I think I can reach it. Yeah. She's so cute. She's smart. She is smart. Oh, there's my girl. It's amazing to see how quickly she learns. Yeah, this is this is just so much fun to, to watch them just just start to figure things out little by little by little. It's it really is it's it's almost magical to, to see them understand things. 
Isn't that right, Belle? What a good girl. There's a piece in your glove. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make you do it again. Very, very good. What a pretty girl. You are just doing such a good job. She's like, I got this now. Yeah, she got it all figured out. It's all figured out. Go. Your first jump to the glove. How exciting is that, sweetie? Because I want to do it again. So different from the prairie falcon. It's a different different kind of an animal and it's a different process. You know the, the, the fundamentals are the same, but you uh, handle them differently. What a good girl. But I didn't miss this day. What a sweet girl. What a sweet, sweet girl. And see, um, and then next we just start extending the distance. So now she's gone to reaching for food to to short jumps in, in one training session, which is wonderful. There's my pretty girl. So it was last week since I was out with you filming these two birds. So you, you work them every single day. Every day, seven days a week. Oh, you want to do it some more. But, okay, just one more time and then we gotta we gotta go. You're about done with your breakfast. You've had quite a bit this she morning. Says, I, I've got it figured out now. I'm really smart. Yes, she is smart. One last time, okay? <laughs> There's my girl. And we're gonna end on a very positive note. She did so super well. Yes, what a sweet girl. Okay, time for the hood. Okay, it goes on. Very, very good, sweetie. Very good. There's my girl. Okay, well, one very, very successful training session. So we're very pleased with her progress. Now it's time to go put her home and let her take her bath and relax.